Thiago is there for support. As uh, Liverpool take it short, ball goes in. Van Dijk, oh my goodness me. Running forward. Sancho. Anthony, take a shot, Anthony. That hard touch was really poor. Malasia. Rashford ahead of me. Marcus Rashford on the other end to make it 2 1. Oh, Mo Salah. Mo Salah's from goal. Dinks the keeper. There we go. 2 2. All over the top again. Rashford, take the shot. There we go. There we go. 3 2. There's a Thiago. Henderson. Yeah, we've angered them. We've angered them to the point they're about to score a goal straight away. This game just doesn't make any sense. So. Sancho, why is Martial not running into the space that I'm running into currently with Sancho? Jaden Sancho goes all the way. 4 free, man. 4 free. He has no right. He has no right to do that. Hey, guys. This is episode 13 of this Manchester United career mode. And welcome back. Okay, let's get this video on the roll. So, um, the last time we were together, uh, we finished, I think, yeah, we played that game. We played the game against... Dynamo Kiev, that's the game. And uh, yeah, we got through to the quarterfinals and you guys already know who we are going to be playing against in the quarterfinals, it's Porto. So we're going to have that first game uh, in the quarterfinals at home against Porto and then our away trip is going to be at the very end of the video. But before that, we have a game against Newcastle and in between those two uh, cup ties, we have a game against Everton. Currently, we are eight points clear of Manchester City on the table as we are going into this episode. So. I want that to either increase or for us to maintain it. And if we can maintain that, I'm pretty sure we can end up champions by the end of the season. So just a quick update on the, the player stats. So top goal scorers at the moment in the league is Mo Salah with 22 goals. Haaland's just one goal behind him with 21 goals. And uh, five goals behind uh, Haaland is Marcus Rashford. So he's third and uh, he's joint third, in fact, with Foden. And they played the same amount of games as well, which is quite ironic. But yeah, Marcus Rashford, he's having a good second half to the season. Um, I feel like by the time we hit, I think January or December, he wasn't in double figures in the league. At the moment, he's hit double figures. He's not too far away from those two players ahead of him. But it's going to take some work for him to do up front if he does want to catch up to them. And since we're on the topic of goal scorers, we are going to take a look at some of the player stats in our squad hub. So as you can see, Marcus Rashford has the most goals in our club at the moment at, in our side and uh, as you can see he's got 27 goals and 14 assists so that's about 41 41 goal contributions in 45 appearances which is really good uh, for the young striker well, 25 yeah, he's quite still considered young young striker and another player to talk about this the flair the flair god himself the flair king anthony his overall's gone up by four since uh since we've taken over manchester united as you can see he's got 17 goals and 18 assists I ain't got quick maths, so I'm not going to attempt that. Actually, I'm going to attempt that. That's about uh, 35, 35 goal involvements and 39 appearances. That is actually wicked. Um, he's got a um, 7.42 average rating. Special player, special player. Uh, Martial, 20 goal involvements in 24 appearances. That big injury, well, not too big. Two month injury um, had him out for a lot of uh, a lot of games because in January we do play a big bulk of games. He could have contributed in those games if he was there but unfortunately he wasn't so yeah he's just on 20 goal involvements uh Jaden Sancho 21 um in 38 which is really good and Bruno he's got about uh, I would say 23 is my maths good 23 I think that's 23 23 goal involvements and 34 appearances okay and uh yeah he's got a 6.83 average rating which isn't that great in the past I've um taken Bruno Fernandes to higher heights but um, yeah, it's just season one. Season one, we are still figuring things out, figuring out how I want to play. I don't want to use the 4-2-3-1 formation forever. Um, I do want to eventually start playing 4-3-3. But if this is the only way we can get results in the first season, then I'm going to have to stick it out. Yeah, we're going to go into the first game against Newcastle. There's a game at Old Trafford. We currently have 77 points to their 29 points. They are currently 15th on the table and we're first. So there's a massive golfing class. However, on paper, Newcastle still possess a really good squad. So yeah, we're going to go into this game, try to take it as serious as possible. There's not going to be any rotation whatsoever. We're going to play our main 11 and uh, try to knock this game out of the park. So let's go. 
Okay, the players are out. We're ready to go. It's my 50th game in charge, apparently. Uh, hopefully, we can cap that milestone off with a victory. Let's kick off. And, uh, yeah, we've been in really good form in the league, running away with it at the moment. We don't look like we're going to lose, uh, but we can't underestimate the teams that are ahead of us. I know they're not teams that we should be expecting to drop points against, but it's the Premier League. Never know what could happen. Never know what could happen. There's Anthony. Tried to play an early ball over the top into Rashford. It's cleared out instantly by Shah. The low with the throw in. Rashford. That's in on his left. Anthony. Sancho. 1 0. 1 0. We, we just make it look really easy. Newcastle, they weren't showing any aggression and trying to win the ball back. Uh, we just, all I, all I had to do was just shield the ball and move it on. Now we'll look at this goal. Nice shot from Rashford. Anti just gives it to Sancho. He protects the ball from Shaw and just rolls it into the corner. Uh, exactly how I described, described it in the first place. I was talking about, like, getting rid of Sancho potentially. I was, lit, I was making it known that he, his position in the, at the club isn't safe. Uh, but I feel like he's redeemed himself. Same with Rashford. Same with... Uh, I'll say Bruno's still in that little territory. Bruno hasn't been exceptional, but he's definitely improved. Oh, they whacked my post or my bar. I think it was a bit of both. I think it hit the corner of the bar, actually. So, yeah, seeing you guys in the comment section linking me to a lot of players. Um, I, I've got a lot of ideas. I've got a lot of ideas, and each suggestion kind of sways me. And it's just, it's really difficult to decide who to bring in. Um, I know, uh, I think Harley, he mentioned, Harley mentioned, um, Muyoko, Mukoko, I need to learn how to say the guy's name for flip's sake. But yeah, he came up with, uh, with something that actually matches my philosophy. He, Miyoko's currently at 73 overall, and um, he definitely matches the type of player that I want. It's like a project kind of player. Like, he's not really good for the first time you get him, but he grows into a really spectacular player. And uh, you guys have uh, let me know about Vlahovic, Osimhen, Gakpo. A lot of players are linked to United in real life. I'm just going to let you guys know from now, this isn't a Ten Hag rebuild. This is a Rimmel HD rebuild. So, yeah. Ishmael Benesir, he's not linked with United in real life, but I got him because I simply wanted a player like him. Obviously, you guys and your suggestions, they do matter, but it's, it's not a Ten Hag rebuild, just to let you know. 39 minutes gone at the moment. It remains 1-0 to us. Um, we're not doing too great. We're not doing too great, but we're not doing badly. As we come forward with the ball with uh, Rashford and Sancho interchanging, we lose the ball on the edge of the penalty area. And uh, Newcastle look to hit me on the break. Murphy running ahead of uh, Isaac and Lindelof is there to recover the ball for us. Lindelof and uh, Martinez, they definitely look like a certain partnership, but will it um, stand the test of time? And will it be a strong enough partnership to go into the Champions League campaign next season. Ooh, Fernandez, 2-0, 2-0. Beautiful, beautiful finish by Bruno Fernandez. Listen, listen, I am the special one. <laughs> There's Anthony. The low. <clears throat> Malasia. Casemiro, Fred, Malasia, back into Fred. Nice footwork from Fred. Casemiro, Fernandez. Casemiro, Fred, Sancho. Sancho, Rashford. Rashford rolls it into the corner. I'm telling you, this, is, this isn't just getting too easy. This is getting too easy. Newcastle, I don't know what you guys are doing or what you guys are doing. Yeah, what you guys are doing on a training ground is not working. Eddie Howe out, man. Eddie Howe out. Because that was just so simple. They didn't touch the ball whatsoever. And yeah, we're just making it look like we're playing against school kids. Casemiro. Malasia. Saka's got a goal for Arsenal. Against Southampton, there's a Sancho, Rashford, hat, no, not a hat trick, it's a, it's a brace, it's a brace, it's a brace, I'm getting ahead of myself, that's his 18th goal in the league, like I said, he's definitely edging closer to Haaland and Salah, all goes in, oh, head up, nice save there by David De Gea, 
He's making sure he gets that clean sheet by any means. Play it out from the back. Malassia into Fred. Bruno. There's Anthony to his right. Anthony has a Rashford in the center. I play the ball into Rashford. Takes it down on his chest. He takes a shot and that's his hat trick. That is his hat trick. That keeper should be doing way better than that. Marcus Rashford on target again in this episode. Uh, this guy's unbelievable. Harlan, he's breathing down your neck. He's coming for Mo Salah real soon. Look at that ball in from Anthony. Travella pass. The ball taken down on the chest of Rashford. And he just drills it into the goal. Pretty much uh, centrally at the keeper. That's why I said he should do much better than that. Well, look. Charging down this left-hand side. That's like their go-to side. I think it's just because St. Maximum's there. I didn't know that's like their biggest strength. Well, look. Oh, okay. <laughs> no clean sheet, I guess. Jolin Turner knocks it in. Willock with the assist. I think Willock was a was a bright spark to bring on for them. Braff. What's a ball in? And it's on Isaac. Nice save by David De Gea. It's near post. And uh, there we go. There we have it. Full time whistle gone. Five one is the scoreline. Man United five. Newcastle United one. And Marcus Rashford gets the match ball. Three attempts. Three goals. 100% conversion rate for the English striker. The 25-year-old is getting close to breathing down Salah's neck. Uh, Harlan needs to be careful. He needs to score more goals because Malcus Rashford is coming. And uh, he's definitely going to get more goals from now to the end of the season. Next is our quarterfinal encounter against FC Porto. And uh, yeah, I'm going into this game really confident, especially with the way we played in the previous knockout round. Just smashing Dynamo Kiev. Uh, it's definitely put a battery in my back to go ahead and do the same against Porto. But they are not the same level of quality. So, uh, yeah, we should expect Porto to fight back and bite back. And, uh, yeah, we just need to remain consistent. Play the football that we played um, in that last game against Newcastle. And uh, hopefully our defence don't have too much to deal with. And hopefully our attack is on point. Okay, so this is how we're going to line up in the quarterfinals for the first leg. David De Gea's and Gold Timbers at the back with Maguire, Martinez and Malasia. The two CDMs are Benacea and McTominay. On the right is Jadon Sancho. On the left is Alanga. Our number 10 is Fernandez. Our number 9 is Martial. <sighs> Poor chance from Benacea. He's definitely going to receive a yellow card. It was a late challenge. I did try to win the ball, but it was just too late. Inexperienced behavior for me. I like Alanga's attitude. He always tracks back. Sometimes you see him running beyond Malasia to get back and defend. Which is uh, definitely going to go a long way for me. A long shot driven out for a goal kick. Down this right hand side. Tomney. Martial flicks it onto Sancho. Thinks into the box. Bruno Fernandes with the header is on target. But Diogo Costa, one of our summer targets, pulls off the save. Even Nelson, oh my goodness me, he, they came close, they came close. Even Nelson tried to play into Tony Martinez, thank God, thank God, Lissandro Martinez was there to cut out that ball. On the other end, Jaden Sancho's running forward, play it into McTominay, McTominay take the shot, take the shot son, what are you doing? <laughs> Ah, oh, the keeper can easily gather that up, but he's thrown it straight back to us. One minute added on. So we have one minute to maybe cause an upset at the end of the first half. Benacea causes an upset at the end of the first half. A goal with his right foot outside the box. That's his first Manchester United goal as well. A spectacular way to get it. Ah, oh, let's take a look at that strike again. Cut this cut back for Malasia. I set myself up for the shot. Open up Benesse's body, finesses it past Diogo Costa. He would be disappointed with himself. So will the manager. Okay, so the interval is here. Ishmael Benesse is the only player to get a goal in that first half, and he did it in a spectacular way. A really good time as well. A really good time. This should psychologically have an effect on FC Port going into the second half. Oh, 
Oh, Wendell's in my box. I thought the referee was gonna give me a free kick for a second, but it was their advantage. I'm there sitting there like some like some Wally. <laughs> Thank God that they didn't equalize like that. Alanga, Malasia, Martial in the center. Doesn't pass it to Martial, but it goes to Sancho instead. Jaden Sancho on the ball. Go on, Sancho. Ooh, Fernandez. Oh, I wanted to give it to Benacer. Always ready for an interception. Why does well as well. Sancho. Martial. Nice short ball into Martial by Sancho. Fernandez. Sancho. Martial. Goal and a half. That is a goal and a half. You can't tell me nothing about that goal. That is a goal and a half. What a ball in from Jaden Sancho. Nice finish from Anthony Martial. And the irony is, I literally just requested for him to be subbed off. I might have to cancel that. I might have to cancel that substitution. Look at this finish. One last look at that. Left foot strike. Catches it sweetly on the volley. There we go. Full time whistle gone. 2-0 victory at home against Porto. Fantastic display from my attackers. Fantastic display from my defenders. The midfield, I mean, wasn't the best display of passing. But I feel like the defence and the attack um, was enough for the game to go our way. Let's head off into the menu, get into this uh, next game against Everton if there's nothing in the menu. Okay, so we have another Northwest encounter in another episode. Everton versus Manchester United. We're live at Goodison Park on an overcast day. It's a 4 p.m. kickoff. We have David De Gea leading us out. Mason Holgate leading out Everton. Let's get this game underway. So, we're up and uh, underway. We're attacking to the left. Everton are attacking to the right. It's a nice view of myself on the on the, on the the bench, on the touchline. And, uh, yeah. I like, I like the Everton stadium on this game. I like the fact that um, I can see myself a bit more on the touchline. I can see my animations. I don't know what I'm waffling about. Let's, let's focus on the game. So, yeah, um, going into this game, at the moment, we have 80 points to Manchester City's, uh, I think, 72. Yeah, 72 points. So, we remain eight points clear. And uh, it's going to take a few more wins to actually clinch the title. But we're well on our way. As long as we keep the gap, keep the distance between the two sides. Ericsson. Anthony thinks over the top. Rashford's in behind for once. 1-0. One 1-0. Nil. One nil. Begovic stood no chance. Where is Jordan Pickford? <laughs> Why is Begovic in goal? Awobi. Calvert-Lewin. Back into Ghana. Tries to back heel it into Calvert-Lewin. And Fred is there. Ericsson. There's a ball forward into Alanga. I'm going to cut in on my right. Oh, where? Why is Anthony gone central? Sure. Nice ball in Rashford with the header. No direction at all. Marcus Rashford with a second opportunity. We're going to regret that. We're going to come to regret that if we don't get another chance. And a bench reaction. Sancho's not pleased at all. <laughs> Sancho's not having it. <laughs> Anthony. There's a ball forward. Either or can have it. Ericsson. Alanga. 2-0. 2-0. The football gets even better. The football gets even better. Well, look at that flare pass from Ericsson. Alanga there positions himself really well. Peeled away from the defender. And, uh, yeah, he, he just has an easy tap in. Begovic, I mean, I don't know what Begovic could have done in that situation, but I, I just don't like his position. And if he was my keeper, he will be sacked by the end of the game. At half-time and going into the second half. Being a bit comfortable. Hopefully that comfort doesn't uh, lead to complacency. I feel like I've got my tactics right in this game. Calvert-Lewin has not won an aerial duel throughout this match. I stuck on two of the tallest centre-backs that we've got. And, uh, yeah, he's he's been quiet. He's been real quiet. Aerial-wise and on the ground. Even his pace. His pace isn't enough to beat those two. 3-0, 3-0, Alango with a spectacular finish. It just gets even more embarrassing for Everton. Uh, 
So yeah, Martial is making his way on the pitch and so is Brandon Williams, Delo and Rashford are making their way off. Is Connor Cody going to be playing as a central midfielder or CDM? Because if that is so, like, <laughs> Frank Lampard needs to sack. He really does. That is shocking. That is shocking. He's actually playing him as a CDM. Sackable offence, that is. Nice ball over the top. Martial, 4-0. We just keep banging in the goals. Marshall, let's let's run to the touchline. Let's, let's let's get the touchline involved in our side. Nope, nope, it's too far. It's too far. As uh, Luke Shaw overlapping. Luke Shaw in the penalty area. Ericsson, shot saved. Marshall, open goal. Shot blocked. Shot blocked by Vanagua. It's a corner kick. Take another look at this. I, I was certain I was going to get the fifth. That left foot from Vanegra denies me the opportunity. But yeah, let's head off into the last game against FC Porto. There's nothing to report on in the menu. Uh, we're just going to head straight off into the game like we did with this one. Okay, so the top goal scorers in the Europa League at the moment, Dabala, he's number one with seven goals. Joint second, we have three players, Ben Yedder, Martial and Rashford. And uh, we have um, another guy in the list in the top five, Sakagni. I think that's his name, plays for Lazio, but Lazio have been knocked out. So he's going to remain on five goals. It's, it looks really good for us uh, at the moment. We have two really good goal scorers in the top five in terms of the top goal scorers chart in the Europa League. Um, either of those guys could end up being the top goal scorer in the competition. Um, I feel like Roma is going to gonna make it far as well. So um, we're not going to count the ball around. He could probably get more goals, but hats off to Martial and Rashford for their progression. So there's a few low moves that are going to go through in July. So um, McHugh, the, the left back, the left wing back that plays for us, 17 years of age. He's going to Watford at the moment. He's over 65. So hopefully he can grow a bit um, in that one year period. Uh, we also have Ben Davidson. You guys already saw him in January making a, an appearance, scoring against, I think, Birmingham City. He's going to go out on loan to Paris FC um, in the second division in France. Uh, Stefan Louis, yeah, he's gone to Birmingham City for a one year loan move. His overall is currently uh, 61, 17 years of age. I feel like he's definitely going to grow into a good striker. So we need to continue to be clinical, like the way we have in this episode. This episode is different to all the other ones because previously we'll miss a ton of chances, a ton, a ton of chances. And uh, we'll make it look hard when we do end up scoring. But in this episode, everything just seems piss easy. And I want that to continue. Defensively, we've been really sound. I think we've only conceded one goal so far in this episode. So may that continue. Head off into this game and confirm our spot in the semi-finals. Okay, so we're 2-0 up on aggregate as we get this game kicked off for the first half in the Estadio do Dragao. And um, yeah, we're attacking to the left or attacking to the right. Now we have made several changes to the starting 11. Martinez and Lindel off their back. At the back together, our Timbers at right back again. Luke Shaw remains in the side. He's going to play the second leg. Benesez in the midfield. Well, he's in the CDM um, role with uh, Casemiro. He's playing left. Casemiro's playing the, the right CDM role. And then we have uh, Van der Beek as our number 10. Alanga's gonna he's gonna play off the left. Sancho's on the right hand side. And uh, Martial is on the bench as uh, Rashford is on the field. So yeah, that's our that's our team. I didn't wanna speak about the lineups in the intro because I feel like um, there's not a lot that has been changed. Benesip, poor pass, poor pass. So that's a that's a good work rate. Oh, what's going on there? I was expected to give that to Rashford. I was about to praise uh, Van der Beek for his work rate. He's actually he's another player that's uh, definitely turned things around for the second half of the season. I feel like everyone's just working for the team, which is really good. Failing to keep possession, both sides. Rashford, Alanga. Alanga on the ball. As an option in the centre, Benesir. 
Pepe gets that cleared. Casemiro. Sure. It's a Casemiro. Poor first touch from the Brazilian. That's Octavio. Casemiro wins the ball back. Van der Beek. Poor pass. One. Passing needs to improve. Jeleno to Martinez. Tony Martinez for Porto. Rojas. And Alessandro Martinez comes across for us. Wins the ball back. Halanga. Back into Martinez. Van der Beek. Alanga. Moves the ball into his right foot. Going to cut in. Right foot shot. Not testing out Diogo Costa. It's a goal kick. Van Sancho comes back to help his defenders out. Rashford. Sancho. Jadon Sancho. They take a shot. That deflection from Pepe almost sent that ball back into a dangerous uh, zone. But decent save at the near post of Diogo Costa. Kind of do expect him to save that. Timber. Ball goes in. From Alanga. It's a nice save from Diogo Costa. Alanga, I'm telling you, Alanga, he's definitely going to be someone that's going to feature in the first team heavily next season. If he keeps this up from now to the end of the season, he's actually a real threat down that left hand side. Gonna see it. Van der Beek. Sure. Benacer, Alanga, I wanted to play that back into Benacer. For some reason, I wasn't aiming it at Benacer. Uh, oh, Rashford takes a shot. Should be scoring. We should already have a third goal on aggregate, if I'm honest with you. Um, I think I think what started to happen is what I was hoping not to happen. Uh, we've, we've, been, we've, we've been wasteful. We've been wasteful. Oh, no. No. No! Oh no, he's not giving a penalty. He's not giving a penalty. Thank God for that. That shot's gone wide. I've taken him out on the follow through. That should be a penalty by right. I can admit that's a penalty. Thank God for that. <laughs> the Nilsson. Fine. Well done, Benacer. Go on, Van der Beek. Got Alanga running in behind. Alanga drills it in. Sancho with the fake shot. Takes a left foot shot and is blocked by Cardozo. They're charging down a lot of shots. It's like a, a really big wall. The keeper's not helping either. He's, uh, he's he's having a really good game. Timber, Sancho. Oh my goodness me, I reacted too late. Remains 0-0 as uh, we pass the 60 minute mark, the hour mark. Mateus slips in behind. Martinez and they're back in the game. I did say that this could happen. The game is back on. Can Porto do the unthinkable? It was a nice pass in behind by Mateus. Decent run, but not even decent. It was a good run by Tony Martinez. Nice finish at the near post. I think we need to take off the breath car because we can't rely on him to help us out, clearly. Okay, so we're about to be proactive. We're taking off the breath car, bringing on David De Gea. Uh, Alanga's taking his uh, spot on the bench. We are bringing on Anthony. Anthony's going to play off that right-hand side. Sancho's moving back to the left. So yeah, let's go. Let's take it to them. Make sure that there's no comeback that's going to be complete. We, we can't afford to have an upset. Not in this competition, at least. Uh, Anthony. Van der Beek. Rashford. He should be onside. Rashford's onside. Marcus Rashford takes a shot. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Three one on aggregate. We need to score more. So we're making another set of substitutions. Martial is on for Rashford, and we are bringing on Ericsson for Donny van der Beek. Anthony. Anthony. Martial. Martial. Diogo Costa again. I feel like he's definitely mad at the match, I must say. Uh, looks like we can hit them on the break. Poor first touch from Jaden Sancho. He's had a poor game, if I'm honest with you. As uh, Tony Martin is the second player to score against us in this episode. Oh, it's a really, really, really pressurizing into the game as De Gea protects his near post from Martinez. Diogo Costa is in our penalty area. Ball comes in. Well done, Williams. That's his first contribution. He deals with the cross. Come on, Martial. 
two minutes is up. We're not going to get to score. We're not going to get to score. It was an open goal as well. So, um, yeah, we've capped this episode off with a draw. Not the best performance in the final third, I must say. Um, defensively, we did fall asleep for a moment. But I feel like we played well defensively. Midfield-wise, ball retention was, uh, was much better. It was much better. But again, it's the finishing that let us down. Let's head up into the menu and cap off this episode. Okay, so we're back in the menu now and we have a draw to attend to. So yeah, here we go. Here we go. The bold man's putting his hand in the ball again. It's going to take out a piece of paper with our name on it. And we have Roma. Roma FC in the semi-finals of the, of the Europa League. So uh, that is going to be an interesting encounter. It's better than playing against PSG. And, um, in fact, I probably would prefer to play Roma in the final. But um, yeah, PSG, they have uh, Praha, which is quite a surprise. Praha knocked out Monaco in the quarterfinals. So yeah, this is actually going to be a tough task. If we end up with PSG in the final, I'm not going to lie. That's going to be an entertaining one. Okay, so Chelsea is against AC Milan and Barcelona is against Manchester City in the Champions League semi-final. So that's for those who, wants to keep, who want to keep an eye on the, um, the competition above us and also it's actually important for us to know because if we end up going on to win the Europa League we end up facing the Champions League winner in the summer okay so we're going to cap this episode off again with an eight point gap between us and Manchester City we have 83 points City have 75 below City is uh, Liverpool who are third with 66 points fourth is uh, Chelsea with 61 points Arsenal they've crept into the top six uh, they are Fifth with uh, 57 points to their name. Aston Villa, they are sixth with 54 points. They're level one points with Everton, who are seventh, and they're only ahead by a goal difference. Tottenham, they're eighth place. West Ham United, they're ninth. And tenth, we have Wolverhampton. Yeah, pause the, uh, the, the video if you want to take a look at the, the stats. So the games lost, drawn, and uh, won, goals for, goals against, and goal difference, etc. Uh, we are going to continue to scroll down again, do the same things, the same sentiment. Pause the video if you want to take a look at that. But the bottom three, we're going to report on. So uh, Brentford, they remain in the bottom three with Southampton and Brighton in that exact same order. Brentford are 80 for 24 points. Uh, Southampton are 90 for 22 points. And Brighton, they are 20 for 17 points. So I feel like Brighton are definitely relegated at this point. <laughs> they don't look like they're going to have any fight... Um, for the last couple of games this season. The face-off against a tough Leeds United. Um, next, they also have Southampton, who are also in the same predicament as them, but Southampton, they, they clearly score more goals than Brighton. Um, they're not actually, actually, there's not too much of a difference, to be fair. It's just eight goals more, and they concede five goals less. So that game's probably going to be quite interesting to, to monitor. And then they've got Liverpool in May. I don't know why I'm monitoring Brian. I just, I just know Brian are just gone. <laughs> they are just gone. Okay, so for the very next episode, this is what it's going to look like in terms of our fixtures. We have a lot of um, games that are, that are considered passive games. Games um, that, that will probably end up just like that Newcastle match where there's not going to be much of a fight from the opposition. I hope not because if they end up putting up a fight, then you guys are going to miss a great game. But um, we aren't going to play Nottingham Forest on camera or Fulham. We're going to start off uh, against Roma FC in the semi-finals. We have a Leeds United game in between. And then we have Roma FC again. Whether we play Bournemouth after that, um, I don't know. I'll decide by the time we get to the end of that episode. But lightly, lightly, it's going to be just three games. So Roma, Leeds and Roma again. Okay, so if you made it this far in this episode, please remember to smash that like button, sub to the channel if you're new, hit the notification bell, just so you know if I want to go live, premiere a video or upload one. Share with your mates as well, anyone that enjoys career mode content. We're only in December. I played FIFA 22 up to September, I think mid-September. So we got a lot of content to get through. So um, yeah, there's never going to be a dull moment on this channel as long as you're enjoying uh, the current content that I'm putting out. So yeah, like I said, keep sharing. I'm seeing the difference, um, the differences between uh, me passively uploading and me consistently uploading. And I'm going to continue to consistently upload because yeah, I'm enjoying the support that I'm seeing. I'm enjoying reading you guys' comments. No suggestion is a stupid suggestion. And some people they're new to the channel so if you are suggesting like um 10 hard targets 
or targets that are that would make the series potentially boring and too easy. Like I don't blame you. I'm not getting at you in the comment section. If I if I appear dismissive, I apologize. But I play Karim with a different way just to give you guys a heads up. But yeah, that's it for now. I hope to see you guys in episode 14. And I uh, hope you guys are ready for that semi-final encounter against Robo C because I am raring to go. I can't wait. Take care for now. Peace.